Hi. In this video, I'll introduce you to word embedding models and show you how to create one using Gensum, the Python library we use for topic modeling. Now, word embedding is a general term that refers to creating a vector representation of the meaning of a word. When we work with term document matrices that contain word counts, frequencies, or TF-IDF representations, we're doing something that's very similar to creating a word embedding model. However, word embeddings tend to refer to slightly more sophisticated models that don't rely entirely on representations where each variable within a vector directly reflects a document. So this means that they often contain information about the close range context of words rather than relying simply on co-occurrence within a document. Word embedding models are by and large machine learning algorithms that aim to provide us with meaningful representations of a word's semantics. Among the most successful of these models is word to vec which was proposed by a research team led by Thomas Mikolov at Google. This is technically two distinct neural net based models, Skipgram and Continuous Bag of Words or CBAL. Another important embedding model is Fast Text, which was created by a research team at Facebook. Gensum contains an implementation of both of these algorithms. Ideally, we should be able to perform math on the word vectors to learn about semantic relationships. So for example, the position of Beijing relative to China should be similar to Berlin relative to the position of Germany. Another classic example is we should ideally be able to take the vector for king that the model creates, subtract the vector for man, add in the vector for woman, and arrive somewhere pretty close to the vector for queen. Here, we're simply going to focus on the two algorithms found in word to vec very quickly, these two models behave in related but essentially opposite manners. Without getting into the math, in Skipgram, the model tries to learn a projection that can take a word as an input and predict the context in which the word was found. Sibao, on the other hand, takes a context and tries to predict the word that should appear there. We'll be implementing a script that creates both kinds of these models using Gensum. We're going to be using the Federalist Papers corpus, but keep in mind that the best word to vec models are generated out of very large corpora. The Federalist Papers is actually far too small to create a consistent model. What this means is, is that often you would want to be working with something that's at the scale of Wikipedia to create your model, rather than something that is only maybe a few hundred pages long. So let's get into the code. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we're going to be using the Gensum library to do our word embedding analysis. So, of course, we need to import Gensum into our script. Now, if you haven't installed it, remember the only thing you really need to do is if you have Anaconda or your standard Python package manager, you can just use pip install Gensum, and that'll install it for you. We're going to need a couple extra libraries to make sure our analysis works properly. Of course, we're going to need the OS library to load in our corpus. And we're going to use the Natural Language Toolkit to do a little bit of pre-processing of our corpus. So I'm going to go through the standard setup. If you've watched my topic modeling series, you've seen this. Uh, I'm just going to set up a brief script that will load in my files and save them into a list. Okay. Now I've prepared a directory here that includes my script and it also includes the Federalist Papers. So just know that that's where I'm getting this corpus information from. So now we have this set up, so it's going through all of the files and reading the text. Now the Gensum word embedding model expects a list of sentences and ideally these sentences should be tokenized. So let's set up some code that will do that for us. So above where I'm loading these things in, I'm going to do a little bit of prep work. The first thing is I need a list to hold the results. And I'm just going to call this sentences. And I'm going to make this an empty list. So what will happen is once I have tokenized my texts, I'll go ahead and add them to this sentences list. But to start, I'm going to write a couple of functions that will help me clean up these texts. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure I have a tokenize function. So I'm going to call this tokenize and I'm going to give it the text. Now I can do all of this on one line pretty simply. 
I can simply say return a list comprehension where I'm using NLTK's sent tokenizer on the text. So what this will do is this will divide my text into individual sentences. And I can say sentence for sentence in NLTK.SentTokenize. And then if I didn't want to do any extra processing, I could simply do NLTK dot word tokenize and I could tokenize that sentence and this would work just fine. The problem with this is, is that it's going to include a lot of junk that I don't really want. So I'm going to go ahead and add an extra function that will filter this a little bit more for me. To do this, I'm going to call this filter words and I'll take a sentence as the input. And what I want to return here is a list comprehension. And I'm going to say word for word in nltk.word tokenize sentence if word dot is alpha. So this will filter out all of the words that aren't actually alphanumeric. So this will get rid of punctuation and these sorts of things. And I might want to make this lowercase. Okay. So word.lower for word in NLTK word tokenized sentence if word is alnum. So this will return a list of words that has been filtered. And now I can go into my tokenize function and adjust this slightly. And instead of using the tokenize word tokenizer here, I'll use filter words. Okay. So now I have a tokenize function that will tokenize my text into sentences and into words while also filtering it. Now, of course, I could all do this in one function, but this is a nice way of dividing up the work. Now, I want to go ahead and tokenize my text. So I can say tokenize text. And I want to add this information to the sentences list. So I'm going to say sentences, and I'm going to extend this list rather than append to it. So what this will do is this will just add each sentence onto the end of this sentences list. If I used append, then I would have a three layer list rather than a two layer list where the first layer is all of the sentences in a given text. The second layer is the sentences and the third layer is the words. I just want all of the sentences because I don't actually care at this point which documents they're coming from. Okay. So that is the corpus preparation step. Now to actually train a word to vec model, it's quite simple. I'm going to instantiate the model and train it. So I'm going to call this word to vec model. And this is going to equal jensen.models.word to vec. And I'm going to go ahead and fill this out uh, on multiple lines just so it's a little easier for you to see. The first thing I need to give it is the data, which is sentences. Then I need to tell it which algorithm to use. So I can say sg equals either zero which will tell it to use the continuous bag of words model or one, which will use skip grams. So here one will use skip grams. Zero is Sibao. Now skip grams tend to work better for smaller corpora where you have less training data. So we're going to use skip grams. Okay. Now I need to make sure I have a comma here because I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more information. I might want to tell it how many times does a word need to occur for us to consider it. And I'm just going to say one here, but you might say 10 if you have a very large corpus and you kind of want to just ignore the really infrequent terms. Okay. So I'm just going to say word needs to occur at least once. It's simple enough. Of course, this isn't necessary to say, but just so you know that this is an option. So this is it. Now we have a model that we've created and this will train the model. Now, one of the nice things about word to vec is we can continue to update it as we go forward. So I can give it new information that will continue to update the status of the model. So here, um, update the model. I'll scroll down slightly here so you can see this. And this is simply word, word to vec model dot train. And then I'll give it 
some new sentences. And of course, this is a list of lists. So this is my new data that I'm going to continue to train my model on. But this train method actually requires a little bit of extra information. I need to tell it how many examples uh, are in the model. And I'm just going to say word to vec model dot corpus count. This is just the standard way of doing it. And epics equal word to vec model dot epics. And so this will update my model. So I can give it as much information here as I want, but this is just showing you that this is a possibility. It's also important to note that you can save this model to file, very similar to how we save that topic model to file in the other series. Save the model to file. This is a good idea when you're training on a very large corpus. You don't want to have to run this again and again. This is just word to vec model save and then give it a file name. I'm just going to call this my embeddings dot p, uh, p because it is a pickle file. And now it's saved to file. And so in a second, I'm going to show you how to visualize this. We will load this in from the saved file rather than retraining it each time. There are a lot of methods that are attached to this model that we can play around with. So for example, this is the Federalist paper, so we might want to check what are the most similar terms to the word government according to this word embedding model? So let's check similar terms. So here I will print and I'll take my word to vec model and I'll take the word vectors and then I'll check most similar and I can give it government. So I'll go ahead and run this and assuming there are no typos, this should work. So Python word embeddings Great, so we can actually see that the words that the model thinks are most similar to government, character, councils, adequate, administration, security, essential, exigencies, authority, extent, and entire. So this actually works out fairly well. This seems to make some intuitive sense. We can also give it a list of words uh, rather than just a single word. So I can say government and voting. like this, and it will run up for that. Oh, interesting. Voting is not in the vocabulary. So why don't I say vote? And here we can see that similar words to vote get added to this list. So now we have elections, which is makes a lot of sense when it comes to vote, right? Independence, encroachments, energy, so the list has changed a little bit. Now, of course, we can do this one at a time to make sure that we are seeing things as clearly as possible, but this gives you a sense of some of the things you might do. So I'm gonna just change this back to the single word. We can also get actual vector information so we can compare the similarities between two different terms. So get similarity scores. Here, I'll just print word to vec model word vectors. I'll look at similarity. And here maybe government and president. This might be an interesting thing to take a look at. Oops. I'll run this. And we can see that government and president have a similarity score of 0.74. All right. So this might be useful. You can use this to maybe develop a dendogram of word relationships. You could use it for all kinds of interesting things. But let's talk about visualizing this model very quickly. I'm going to create a new file that I'm going to call word embeddings, word embedding viz.py. And here I'll import the libraries I need. I'm going to need Jensum, of course. I'm going to need matplotlib, pyplot, as plt, as we normally do. And we're going to use principal component analysis to visualize this word embedding model. We could also use things like 
TSNI or T-Stochastic Neighbor Embedding, but we've done PCA at other places on this channel, so let's go ahead and use that. So here, I'm going to go into sklearn, and I'm going to go into decomposition, and I'm going to import PCA. This is, of course, a dimensionality reduction algorithm that comes from linear algebra. So the first thing we need to do is we need to load the model from file. So here, I'm just going to call this my model, so I don't have to type out that long thing again. I'm going to say gentum. We'll go into models. We'll go into word to vec, word to vec, and we'll load the file. And I think I called it myembedding.p. Is that right? Yes, that is correct. OK, this should load it in from file, which will be much quicker than training it, even though this is essentially a toy corpus. The next thing I want to do is I want to grab out the vocabulary from this model. And I'm just going to call this vocab and my model.wordvectors.vocab. OK, let's comment this, uh, get the vocabulary. Then I need to instan instantiate the PCA object. And I'm going to call this PCA equals PCA. And I'm going to use just two components because we're going from a high number of dimensions down to just two. Now I should point out that when we create our models, we can actually tell word to vec how many dimensions we want to have in our embedding model simply by specifying the size of the model. And I can say 100, which would make it a 100 dimensional embedding model. Now, anything in the double or triple digits tends to be fairly reasonable. Um, of course, the more dimensions you have, the more accurate your embedding model might become, but the longer it's going to take to process it. I'm just going to leave this with the default number of dimensions and come back here to our visualization script. So now I'm going to go ahead and fit and transform the PCA object fit and transform the PCA object. I'll call this my PCA equals PCA fit transform. And now I'm going to go into my model and I'm just going to grab out the vocabulary. Okay, so what this will let me do is this just lets me get all of the word vectors so I can visualize them. And now we simply want to visualize this. And this is something we've done in other places here quite a bit, we just use the scatter plot to plot out the transform data on the first two principal components. Remember, these are abstract axes that represent the variance within this particular data set. We're going to lose information, but that's fine. At least we can see it. So here, I simply need to say, let's plot the data. And I'll say plot.scatter. And now I'm going to need to get some slices of data from this my PCA object. So here I'm going to say my PCA, and I want to go in and grab the x values, and I'm going to also go in and grab the y values. This is syntax that comes from the NumPy library. Now I want to actually label this because I need to know which dot represents which word. So I'll use plot.annotate annotate the plot. So I actually need to iterate through all of the words. So for I word in enumerate vocab, I'll plot, annotate, I'll give it the word and the xy coordinates, which equal my PCA I and zero and my PCA I one. This is very similar to what we did up here on line 18, except we're getting one item instead of the whole list. And finally, all we need to do is plot.show. So Python word embeddings viz.py. And we can see we have a new word embedding model that shows us the relationships among these words. So we can kind of zoom in and take a look at this. If we go over here, zoom in a little bit, and we can see some interesting things. Supreme Judiciary Department, Executive, Legislative, and Judiciary. It's very interesting that these words all appear quite closely to each other. So we can see that there is some 
kind of sensibility going on in this model, even though it's from a very small corpus. So there you have it. That is how you quite quickly create a word embedding model using a demo corpus. I hope this was useful and good luck with your text analysis. Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye.